and welcome to my creative space thank you so much for being here with me today welcome to another diy video if you're not already i would love for you to subscribe and join this creative squad today's video it's a long one i had put all 16 easter diys from last year they're my favorite i hope you enjoy so let's get started for this diy i'm taking this adorable bunny wood cutout that i picked up from the dollar tree and i am going to be staining both sides on this color now i am going to let it dry now i'm gonna take this black marker and this ruler and i am going to start making lines on this bunny i'm trying to create i guess like a shiplap i don't know if it's that's what it's called but if you know let me know in the comments below but basically that to create a bow i am going to be taking my pinto bean sack if you know you know and i am going to be cutting off a strip off of this actually two one of them is small and one of them is this one and basically i'll crisscross it and then i'll cinch it in the middle and then i'll take the smallest one and i will tie it together to make sure that this bow keeps its shape or the shape that i want and then i'll just remove what i don't need and then i'll dovetail the ends and there you have it easy easy peasy now i want my bunny to have a tail so i take some ute rope and i am going to be creating a pom-pom so i wrapped it around my fingers tie it in the middle now i am trimming both of the ends and then i'll just trim whatever i don't need to kind of shape it into a circle and then i'll just rub it against my hands to fluff it up and then you will see me in a second grabbing all of it to one side and then rubbing it like that and basically the flatter side is going to be glued and the other one is going to pop out now it's time to glue everything together so i am adding the bow and then the cutesy little tail and that completes the bunny now you can use it how it is or you can make it into a wreath just what i'm going to do and i just took this dollar tree wreath and removed some of those little branches or whatever they're called i had used it back in december when i created some christmas diys and basically i just took it and painted it white once everything is dried and ready to go it's time to put it together so i place my little bunny on top of this wreath and i just glue it together and then i'll just take this extra piece of burlap and i will be creating a hanger with that and basically we are done now look at how cute and beautiful this bunny wreath turned out i love it For this DIY, I'm taking these pots, two wooden dowels, and this cute sign. I've been wanting to use this sign so bad, and I finally figure out what to do with it. So I separate what I am going to use, which is the two pieces that say Happy Easter. Now, I'm going to take these glass gems, and I'm going to pick the ones I'm going to use. I saw Hey Yo Let's DIY do something with them, and then I saw Savannah from Savvy Crafts use them on pots the other day, and I really love that look. So I am going to be gluing the little gems around the rim of this pot. To paint my flower pots, I am going to be taking my acrylic white paint and I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. Once I get all the way up, I am going to start painting the little uh, gems and yeah, I'm just going to give it, I end up giving the gems a couple of coats to cover them all up and then I painted the top rim just because I'm going to be able to see that. Now I took some stain and I am going to be staining the wooden dowels. Now that that is ready, I'm taking some floral foam and gluing it inside the little pots and now all is left or I guess now the next step is to glue my wooden dowels into the signs and i glue one higher than the other just because i want one of the signs to be higher than the other now i took my antique wax and i am going to be distressing these cute little pods and i'll just do it until i think it's enough once that is done i am going to move on to placing my little signs into the pots and again i try to keep one higher than the other just to make sure that they that's just what i wanted to do with mine but that's just an idea and then i just added some spanish moss and here is the end result how cute are these flower pots that now became sign pots
for this DIY, I'm taking this Dollar Tree egg that I found. It's really big. So I am going to be gluing this together because I don't want this to come apart. Once it's glued together, I am going to be taking my acrylic white paint and I am going to add some baking soda. And it's usually 50-50, 50% of each. And then I'll just mix it until I think it's enough. And, or I guess it's combined. And then I'll just start painting my egg. And it's as easy as that. I love this technique and I really think this is for sure one of my favorite DIYs. Now to decorate this cutesy little egg, I had these stickers, or I guess they're not stickers. Well, some of them are, but those little flowers, the pink flowers and the butterfly, I got those from Hobby Lobby if you are wondering. Now, this is a candle holder and I had used it in a past project and I just went in because at first I wanted this to be completely white, like all one color. That's why I went back in there with some white paint. Now I am going to start gluing these cutesy little flowers and I just love this. I just started placing them wherever I thought I wanted them to go and wherever I thought they were going to look cute. And then at the very top, I am going to be gluing that cutesy little uh, butterfly. And I just love this. I think it's so chic. I love this. And then I just added a couple of these other little uh, butterflies. These little butterflies came from the Dollar Tree. And they are so cute. I just added the ones that I thought were going with the theme. And I just needed them to be small. I also added some of those little gems, by the way. Here is where I decided that I wanted to distress this candle holder. And I think it was a good call. Here is a picture of the end result. How quick and easy was this and how beautiful this turned out. For this DIY, I'm going to be using these popsicle sticks. Now, these are from walmart but the dollar tree does sell them so i take them and i cut flat one side and the other one i cut it into a point because this is supposed to be like a fence i'm trying to make so i just cut a lot of these and if you want exact numbers uh check the description box because at this moment i don't remember but anyway so i cut all of them and once i had all of them I grabbed this foam board. Now, I feel like it will look a lot better with actual wood uh, base, but this is what I had to work with. So this is a piece of foam and it's 11 by four, but check the description box for accurate measurements <laughs> because I might not be right. But anyway, so now what I'm gonna do is just place all the popsicle sticks along the side just to see exactly where I need to glue them and make sure that there's enough space in between each popsicle stick. And then I'll just keep gluing them. Once all of them are glued down, I felt like something was missing. So instead of using popsicle sticks, I grabbed this piece of uh, cork sheet that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and basically trim a few strips off of this, the same size of this popsicle sticks and that is going to go in the middle of this um, already glued popsicle sticks to kind of make it look even more like a um, fence if you will now i am going to give you a tip i didn't want to use popsicle sticks because i didn't want to have to glue multiple popsicle sticks one i felt like it was going to be too heavy and two i didn't want those gaps in between each popsicle stick so that's why i use this but i will tell you i didn't remove the sticker on the back of these and that was kind of slippery i had to go back and kind of keep gluing them because they were kind of ungluing so i would say just try to use something try to use it without the sticker or just use popsicle sticks or something else that you can find that is long enough if you don't want those gaps like i did but anyway moving on so i just took my white paint and i'm going to paint this fence now that that is done i took my antique wax and now i'm going to be distressing these And now I am going to be taking some floral foam and I will glue it in the middle uh, just because this is the only floral foam I had. That's the honest truth. And basically, I forgot to leave a gap in between the floral foam and um, the fence. So I was trying to squish my fingers in there, trying to cover up the foam in there. So I would say leave a gap right there. And then I just fill it in with some Spanish moss. Yay, yay, yay. Now I grab some flowers. These ones are from Walmart. And then the other ones are made out of burlap fabric and some rope and if you're interested in knowing how they are made you should check out the video link in my description box because i made those and i have a video on it whoop whoop 
but anyway so this is what it's looking so far i love how this is looking these colors i am just here for it i love it once i am done adding all the flowers i decided to add this cute bow that i had laying around from a past project and i just like it because it goes really well with the vibe and then i decided to add that easter hint to it and i had these cute eggs from the dollar tree and i just added these skewers in there just to be able to stick them into the um centerpiece and i just um added three of them you could add more if you like but this is what i did with mine and i love it here is a picture of the end result i love how this diy turned out For this DIY, I'm using this Dollar Tree bucket I found. And honestly, how cute is this bucket? I love how cute this is. But I decided to paint mine white. Now you can leave yours how it is or you can paint it a different color. But I went for white for mine because why not? And then once it's completely painted, now it's time to move on. I'm going to grab some floral foam. And as you will see, I am kind of struggling on how to glue this. I wasn't sure how I wanted to glue this, but then I figured it out. Don't worry. Now, the next step is to grab a branch. And this one, I picked it up from my front yard. So it was free. Whoop, whoop. And then I am going to be using this cute pink flowers I already had on hand. They came from the Dollar Tree. I just took them off the little branch. And as you can see, some of them are smaller than others. So I went for the little bigger ones first and then i just added the smaller ones randomly on this little tree this is what this tree is looking like doesn't this look like apple blossom i think it does now you can leave it how it is or you can add these cute little eggs i found i decided to go in with them because i wanted it to have a hint to easter as well and i thought it was a really cool idea so i took these eggs and took them off the skewers and they already had a little hole from when this where the skewer i'm sorry was sitting so i just took some mute rope and created little knots and start pushing them onto the little already made holes and i glued them on there and then i just figure out exactly where they were gonna go and started cutting them and then i just added some glue to the branch and started gluing my little rope on there now i do end up adding the little bows on there as well the little tails were a little too long so i do trim them too and yeah so this is what it's looking like so far i apologize because these uh specific diy was not showing everything i wanted to show my camera moved and i didn't realize it i promise you i'm trying my best and i will continue to try my best and now all that's left is just to add some spanish moss into this little bucket to cover that up and i also end up distressing the bucket a little bit off camera and here is a look at how this really cool spring easter tree turned out i love this little tree one i'm gonna take this dollar tree hanger and this little bunny this was like a garland that i bought for my um daughter and i just took one of those bunnies to use that and uh, be able to trace this cute little bunny and as you can see i'm tracing it a little bit bigger than what it actually is because i want this to be a little bit bigger once i have it traced on this paper i'm gonna take my scissors and i'm gonna cut that off and that is going to work for the next step once i have my little bunny i'm just trying to make sure that both sides are kind of even and once I have that ready, I'm going to take this popsicle sticks and I'm basically going to be creating my cutesy little bunny with this popsicle sticks because it will get stained and I just, it turns out really, really cute. So I sit the bunny on top of the popsicle sticks and I just trace it with a pencil. And by the way, I'm trying a new angle for this videos because I think sometimes I don't show things correctly and you will see me struggle a little bit but um i promise you i'm working on it and let me know if this angle works better i think it does because you can actually see exactly what i'm doing from up top so i think it's good but if you don't like it let me know and i'll switch it but anyway so as you saw i just used my scissors to cut the popsicle sticks into the shape of this little bunny and then i'm just gonna take some hot glue and i will be gluing those onto the paper the reason why is because i don't want to have to glue the popsicle sticks from the sides because i felt like the glue was gonna come up and so this way the 
glue is on the bottom and so basically the edges of this uh, little bunny were showing through the little paper and so I just go in with some scissors and trim that off and once I have that ready to go I am going to be taking a sending sponge and I'm going to be sending the edges of this cutesy little bunny just so the edges are smoother and now it's time to stain our cutesy little bunny and I'm taking this brush and the stain color will be in the description box as always. And also the good thing about gluing these popsicle sticks onto the paper is that you can actually bend the popsicle sticks and you can get in between the popsicle sticks and so everything is all one color. And yeah, so now I'm going to take a paper towel and kind of just rub it off and I guess remove the excess of this stain. And now I am also going to be staining these two little boxes these came from these little drawers from the Dollar Tree and if you saw my past DIYs I think it was like two three videos ago I did this planters and I removed those little drawers here is where they came in handy because they are perfect for this DIY so all I'm gonna do is stain them and as you can see I'm staining a little bit of the inside just because when I put the greenery in um, maybe they'll show I don't know I don't think they do but it's it, it seemed like the correct thing to do okay anyways now i'm taking the sign and i'm gonna be painting the back of this in the color white and um i'm using the back because it's it has nothing on it and i've had it where they have the stickers on there and when you put the paint on top they kind of get um i guess bubbles in them in between the paper and the carton board or whatever it's called and <laughs> But anyway, so now I'm just going to take this piece of wood to kind of mark where I want the ship black ship lap i'm sorry effect and as you can see um i was kind of impatient and i the paint wasn't completely dry <laughs> so when i went to do this the uh, piece of wood kind of removed some of the paint but it's okay because i went in with some more white paint and then um, it kind of looked like it was meant to be i don't know it seemed very organic once i do the um this dressing and all that it seemed uh, like it looked good or at least to me but anyway so now where i mark with the pencil so for the shiplap, I just went in with some black paint and kind of went over those lines just because I wanted them to be a little more stronger. And as you can see, they are not perfect and that's okay because that's what I was going for. I was trying to I was trying to give it a little bit more of old look to it and now I'm just gonna take my brown chalk paint from Waverly as well is going to be linked in the description box and I'm going to be um, just going on there with that paint kind of distressing it as well on the edges of this little sign and now um, I'm going to take this yarn because my cutesy bunny needs a little tail and I'm basically going to create a cute pom-pom for this and so I just wrapped it a few times on my fingers and then I'm gonna cut it off use another little piece of yarn and then tie that together once that is tied it I am going to be trimming the edges with scissors as you can see and then it's going to be just kind of even it out just so um, it looks uh, pretty and fluffy if you will and once that is completed I am going to uh, test it on there and as you can see it's so pretty and cute now i had this little piece of raffia that came on those little uh, easter eggs from dollar tree and i thought it was the perfect thing to use for my little bunny and so i just took it and created a simple little bow and uh, as always my explanation or my directions is just tie it how you would tie your shoes that's the best i can come up with but <laughs> anyway i'm gonna take another piece and i am going to create a little um i guess like a like a necklace type of thing situation and i'm gonna glue it on there and i am going to turn it over and then glue my little bow i was trying to figure out if i wanted it on the ear or on the neck and i went for the neck and um, now it's going to be just gluing my little cutesy tail on there and how adorable is this bunny okay now it's time to put everything together so i'm going to grab my bunny and placing it under my two little boxes 
to uh, create the planters i'm starting with the boxes and i will glue them in place and i'll go for my second box just making sure i forgot to put glue in between each box so you will see me um, going in right now with a little bit of glue and uh, trying to rescue this situation and then all that's left is to glue the cutesy little bunny i feel like i should have glued it a little bit higher just because when i put the greenery on there it's kind of covering the legs but uh, it looks really pretty still but um i would say move it up a little bit if you want to see the whole bunny body um, but anyway i learned my lesson and so now i waited till the end till everything was glued to grab my waverly wax antique wax and um, distress it with that and as you can see you can see where the paint kind of came off but i feel like it looks nice um, but i don't know you let me know what you think and now all that's left is to create a hanger for our cutesy bunny or i guess one of the last steps is to create that now i'm gonna take some of this floral foam and some greenery that greenery is actually from dollar not dollar i'm sorry uh from walmart and it was 99 cents so it was a great deal and um now i'm just gluing the foam inside and now i'm gonna take this greenery and i cut the pieces individually each branch because otherwise it was gonna be too high so i just um cut them all off and then i just started placing them in my little boxes to make it look nice and fluffy once i had everything in there i also had some of the dollar tree carrots that are super cute and adorable and i just placed them in there to decorate with that and here is the end result. I am in love of how this DIY turned out. Two, I'm taking one of the Dollar Tree tote bags and I'm basically going to be cutting two rectangles. As you can see, these ones are already cut and is because um, and they're cut into a bunny shape. And it was because on my last project, my Easter sign with the bunnies and the eggs, if you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. I was going to use that to cover up the bunnies, but I was only able to get um, enough for two of those little bunnies and I needed three. But anyway, so basically I cut that into a rectangle and then I'm I'm going to glue the edges to create a little sack and it works this is a really easy and quick project and it turns out really pretty um, once I have it all all my three sides glued down um, for the top part I'm just gonna flip the inside out just so the seams or what what I'm trying to pretend are seams are on the inside and now all I'm going to do is add some more glue on the top edge and I'm basically going to fold it in a little bit just so it's um or we're gonna pretend again like this is a seam <laughs> and um and then I'll just fold it in one more time just so it stays in place and it looks nicer and now all I'm going to do is take a marker and write on their bunny bait you could use stencils if you have a Cricut machine you could just use the stickers and put them on there but um this works as well and then all I'm gonna do is take my antique wax from Waverly and I'm gonna go over my little sacks and uh, just to make them look like they're dirty you know and i'll just fill them in with some spanish moss and i end up creating two out of the tote bag and you could probably create more but i only went for two and then i just created one other one with the uh bean sack or burlap fabric and um, i just fill it in with some dollar tree little carrots that are so cute by the way and then i had this basket that i created on one of my past diys i will leave the video link below if you're interested and now here is the end result i love how these little bunny bait sacks turn out going to be taking two of these wooden crates from the dollar tree and these ones i am recycling them from a past project but you will need to glue them together and basically i just grabbed my waverly chalk white paint and i painted the whole thing in this color once these crates were dried i basically took my waverly black chalk paint and i am going to be painting the little crevices that these boxes have because i wanted it to look like it's shiplap and they're not perfectly painted but that's just what i wanted to do now i am going to take this bunny wood cut out that i picked up from the dollar tree and i'm gonna take my spackling and i'm going to be filling in the hole where the hanger was because i'm not gonna be hanging this bunny and i don't want that hole to be there so that's why once that is dried i am going to take my waverly chalk white paint and i am going to be painting my bunny in this color 
And while this rolls, I wanted to let y'all know that I had a few comments saying that the music in my videos were distracting. So I am trying these videos without music. Let me know what you think. Once my bunny is completely dried, I am going to be taking my brown chalk paint and I am going to be distressing this cute little bunny and I will be going in with some wax later, my antique wax, because I really love that color, but I wasn't sure exactly what I needed to be gluing and you know it's kind of dangerous with wax and um, hot glue, so I left that to the end. Okay, so I am creating a cute bow for my little bunny and I know the angle is not perfect or great on this one, but don't worry about it because I make the exact same bow later on the video and you will see exactly what I did. Okay, once my little bow is completed, it is time to grab some more rub on stickers and this time is letters. I am going to be spelling happy Easter on my bunny. So I cut out the letters that I'm going to need and I start placing them on my bunny. Now I decide to glue down my bow just so it wouldn't move and I can see exactly where my words were going to go. And it doesn't end up working out. You'll see later. But anyway, so I start adding them on there. And let me tell you, these ones are a lot easier to work with. They don't make you work out your arm so good for that so i finished spelling happy and i did easter off camera and i had some technical difficulties with easter i messed up where i placed my letters and as you can see the e is missing on easter up there but i basically didn't have another e and i end up having to use paint to write my own e we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to move on. Okay, so as you saw, I distressed my wooden crates. And now I'm taking my antique wax and I'm distressing my bunny with that. And I love how this is looking besides, you know, the mess up with the Easter word. <laughs> anyway, it's time to put this together. And I am going to grab some popsicle sticks to help support the bunny in place. So I just cut, I take two of the bigger popsicle sticks and then I glue two together. And then I am going to start adding my hot glue on the back and then grabbing my popsicle stick and gluing it into place, just making sure that it's not showing on the other side. And I do the exact same thing on the other side. And I basically just hold it there for a little bit. And once it's secure to stand, I take my hot glue gun again and I glue it in place. And then I added a little bit more glue in the middle and then I glue another popsicle stick to um, help support um, this bunny even better and that is going to be that for that and then i take some white paint this is optional i just wanted to paint it so everything is one color and it looks nice and finished and here is what this bunny crate is looking like. I love it. And now basically it's time to decorate it. I am going to take two of these little egg packs from the Dollar Tree. And basically I'm just going to place them in the crates. And as you can see, I only had a pack of the colorful ones and a pack of the gold ones. And I just grabbed a Sharpie and kind of like draw little specks on them and um, i'm taking them off so i can fix um where the eggs are going to be sitting and yeah i added some little um carrots and here is the end result i love how this bunny crate turned out For this DIY, I am going to take one of these Dollar Tree reeds and I am going to be grabbing my Waverly Chalk white paint and painting it. And as you can see, it's not perfectly painted. I wanted it to look a little distressed, so that's why I left it like that. But you're more than welcome to cover it completely in white. And now I am going to be using this styrofoam little eggs that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I am putting some skewers on them because I am going to be painting them white and this is easier to do when you have somewhere to hold them from. And then after I am done painting them, I am going to start putting them in this floral foam that way they dry. Once they are dried, I grabbed a little bit of water and I added some chalk black paint. And I'm sorry because I thought I was recording and I didn't until I was almost done. So basically, I just did little splashes of paint on them. 
once everything is dried or so i thought you'll see later but i took everything that i was going to use for my wreath and these flowers came from um walmart and they were a dollar which i thought it was a good deal they are very pretty and i start by gluing the first one i am only going to be using three of them as you can see and i am going to be placing them where i want them to go once they are glued i took some of this cottons that i already had on hand and i grabbed four of them and i glue two in between each of these flowers and once i am done gluing those into place it is the time to start gluing the little eggies into place and this is why i said and so i thought because i thought these eggs were dried and you will see that my fingers end up um, with paint all over them which thank the crafting gods that i didn't make a mess on these flowers <laughs> but anyway so i'm just gonna glue them on there and i'm just gonna let you watch And now it's time to make a bow. So I take two pieces of ribbon. This one is from the Dollar Tree. I find the middle and then I glue the two ends to the middle. I flip it over and then I basically fold them up and then I fold the two edges down. I hope that makes sense. And then there you have that first one. And then I do the exact same thing to the second one. Once I have them, I just kind of glue what was getting unglued. And then I glue them together. Once they are glued together, I grabbed an extra piece and I kind of just fold it so it wouldn't be so wide. And then I basically trim the back just so it's not too long. And then I start gluing my two pieces together and there is the bow. Now all I do is just fluff it up and that's that now i found this welcome wire sign at the dollar tree and i thought it was so pretty and so good for this so i take a piece of this U rope and as you can see i am going to be running it through to hold this i don't want it to be stable i kind of wanted it to be able to move so that's why i did it like that now i take it and then i am going to be placing it exactly where i wanted it and then i am going to be gluing it and removing whatever U rope i don't need and then once it's glued this is what it's looking like now it's time to glue our bow into place and how pretty is this now all that's left is to do a hanger and you can do whatever you want i did some you rope the exact same way i wrapped it on the little wire uh sign and we are done here is the end result i am in love of how this read turned out For this DIY, I'm going to take this really cute bunny I found at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to start by removing the happy little sign that this has. Once that is removed, I'm going to take my hawk saw and I am going to be trimming off the arms of this bunny. And then I am going to remove, basically I'm going to separate the little egg and the bunny from this sign and i'm gonna use the same the hot saw to do that as you can see now that i removed the bunny i'm going in to remove the extra pieces that are left there from the bunny just so uh, it can just be shaped into the half of the egg that this sign is once i had all those pieces separated i took the arms and i am going to remove uh, only the paws off of this and i'll take my sanding sponge to sand the edges so they are smooth and i'll also take the same sponge to remove the glitter off of this little bunny and now i am going to use the same acrylic white paint and i will be painting completely the head of the bunny in this color and i will also paint the paws with this and as a suggestion because i don't think i showed it on this video you can fill in the little holes from the hanger on this bunny with some speckling and then go over with paint i think i end up deciding that later on on the video and then i just didn't and didn't record it but i just thought you want to know and then i'm going to take um this pink paint and i'm going to paint the edges of this egg because this is going to be standing and i don't want to see the brown color okay now i grab some paper and i trace my little paws on there and then i cut them off 
cut them off i'm sorry with some scissors and then i traced them on this scrap of foam board that i had this is an optional step i want my bunny to have feet so that's why i did this but you can totally skip this if you don't want to deal with it and um now i just took my crafting knife and i'm gonna cut off my little legs and i know these are already white but i still went in with some white paint just because i want it to be even in the same color that the head and the other hands have and now i am going to grab my white not white i'm sorry brown chalk paint and i will go in for the head the paws the feet with the same color and then i am just taking a pencil and kind of mapping where i want the bottom of the paws to be the little circles you know what i'm talking about and i'm going to grab a flat brush in this white i'm not white why do i keep saying white i'm so sorry it's pink pink okay the pink color and kind of marking um or painting where i traced and um i'm so sorry i'm here but obviously my brain is somewhere else and i can get this together but i promise you i'll get it together but anyway once i'm done doing that i will take a scrap of wood and i will be tracing a triangle and then i'll stain that this is the exact same thing i did on my last bunny on my last easter diy home decor i will link it below and uh, once i'm done doing that i will take some black paint in this the top of the brush or i guess the bottom you know what i'm talking about the end of this brush and i will create the eyes with that and then i'll just take a pencil and dip it in the black paint to create the little mouth for this little bunny and once that it's completed i am going to grab some hot glue and i will be gluing the nose into place and now i'm gonna take some twine rope and i will be giving this bunny some um whiskers and uh so i will be cutting off three pieces for each side so a total of six little strings and then i will just glue them on there with some hot glue now i'm going to take one of these dollar tree crates and as you can see i'm recycling this from a past project and basically i will paint it white and then while this dries i am going to take some of these jenga blocks that are also from the dollar tree i will take four of them because these are going to be the legs of my little crate and i will take some hot glue and start gluing them into place now this is optional um if you want to put legs or not um i just needed this because it raises the head of the bunny you will see in a second what i'm talking about now all i'm going to do is to paint this legs in the color white just so everything matches and after that is done i will be um distressing the sides of this crate i didn't distress um the front and the back because that's not going to be showing you'll see why and uh so now i'm going to take this popsicle stick and i will basically mark um where the head ends of this bunny because that is going to be holding the bunny and um the crate together as you can see i'm adding some hot glue and i will glue this and onto the crate first because i want to have some support for my head now i'm adding glue to the popsicle stick and sitting this head on top and this is what it's looking like now i'm gonna add some hot glue to the front of this crate and i will be gluing the half of this egg on the front and this is what i was talking about if i would have put no if i wouldn't have put legs on this crate it would have been too um the head would have been too low and it would have been kind of hidden behind it but anyway so as you can see the little bunny feet were too big for what i was going for so i end up having to grab my crafting knife and cutting them off a little bit smaller now i'm just placing my arms and my legs or i guess the feet of this bunny where i want them to go and then i'm going to start adding hot glue to them and once that is done it is time to grab those cutesy little dollar tree eggs and placing them right in the crate if it's perfectly on there i did take off the eggs just to make sure that i um adjust the carton in there and then i put the eggs back in there and it looks super cute now i decided that i wanted this bunny to have a bow so i created a really simple bow with this ribbon and i added it to the ear and now as a last step one of the front legs was showing a little bit too much so i removed it and then i glue it back in there but a little bit more inwards and i liked it way better and here is the end result i think this bunny turned out super cute and is for sure one of my favorites for this diy i'm taking two of these bamboo dollar tree reeds and as you can see one of them it's already taken apart and that is because i recycle it from my heart wreath that i created for one of my videos and basically 
basically this wire is from one of those 3d wreaths from the dollar tree and i just picked the biggest ring and i cut it in half and um once i have those wires ready i shape them into a ear and then i just start taking the bamboo uh pieces and i just wrap them on there with some twine rope it's really easy to do uh, i would say keep the thicker pieces at the bottom and then just wake your work i'm sorry your way up and um because it will be easier to bend once you uh, get to the top and once i am done wrapping this on there i will be taking um some yarn to wrap these the bottom of the ears together uh I did this because I didn't think I had any twine rope left, but then I do end up finding something God, and I was able to finish this wreath. But for the meantime, uh, just pretend this is twine rope and not yarn. <laughs> but basically, I just tie this at the bottom. Once that is done, I'll cut that off, and then there you have both of your ears. And now I, um, because I left those thicker pieces at the bottom, these worked really great for uh, basically stabbing this circle wreath and adding them on there and being able to secure them now i'm gonna add a lot of hot glue to make sure everything is secured and trust me it was totally fine and you could also secure it with some twine rope okay so i'm gonna take this uh walmart picks that i found for 99 cents and i'll basically cut the branches off individually and then i'll just divide them in half and i will put half on each side at the bottom of this wreath i hope that makes sense and then once i have those ready i will glue those pieces together to create one single piece and i think it looks amazing now that i have those ready to go i will take some of these dollar tree picks and don't they look like whiskers i think they do and i thought it was the perfect thing to use so i just also cut those off into individual pieces and then i just started um, adding them at the bottom of this wreath and i kind of just stab them and then i did one in with some hot glue and secure them in place once those are ready i did add it some hot glue and put the greenery uh from Walmart on top and then after that i had this ribbon that i really like and i thought it went perfect for this and i just created a simple bow as you can see now i'm creating the tail of this and then i'll just create the middle loop and then now i'm just going to add some of the dollar tree carrots these little carrots are adorable i don't know why i love them so much but anyway i just used three on each side and kind of just glue them on there kind of um on the branches and then here is where i found uh my twine rope and then i just started covering the yarn on there and it was a great idea because otherwise this would not look good <laughs> but basically that's all i did and i love how this turns out here is a picture of this beautiful wreath i do love this taking this adorable bunny and i'm going to remove the sign that says spring and now i'm gonna take a sanding sponge and i'm removing all the glitter off of this little bunny and now um this bunny looks like it's sitting on a hat but i don't want it to look like that so i'm removing that little piece that is supposed to be shaped into the hat and now i'm gonna send it down with a sanding sponge just to make sure that the edges are even now i'm gonna take some spackling and i'm gonna fill in the holes with where the hanger was on this bunny and once I do that I'm gonna take some white acrylic paint and I'm gonna paint my whole bunny in this color and it would be up to you but I also end up painting the back of this bunny in the color white just to make it look cleaner and now I'm gonna take my Waverly chalk brown paint and i'm going to distress it with a brush and once i am done painting it with that or i am happy with how much i put on it i'm taking my waverly antique wax and going over it as well and then after that i took this other ivory chalk paint color that i had and i did a few strokes just to make it look a little bit distressed and i am happy of how that turned out now i'm gonna take um this little scrap of wood that i had on hand and I am going to be drawing uh, my bunny a new nose or I guess making a new nose and then I trim it down with my hawk saw and now I'm taking my brown stain and I'm going to be staining my nose now I need the bottom to be straight because this needs to stand so I am just going to 
basically trace a straight line and then take my hacksaw and remove the bottom just because it was a little bit curved and it was not gonna stand now that i am done with that i am going to take my sanding sponge and i am gonna sand it down to make it smoother now i'm taking this wooden plank this one is from hobby lobby i had it for a very long time so that's what i'm going to be using but you could use the dollar tree wooden planks they sell those now and basically i just trimmed that in half and then i'm going to take a brush and i will be staining my wood pieces and as always any paint i use will be listed in the description box and if you ever have questions just leave it in the comments down below and now I'm going to take my Waverly Black Chalk Paint and I am going to be using the end of this brush to draw my bunny's eyes. And I love how this bunny is looking and how simple this is. Now I'm going to be gluing my nose in place and I will be using some hot glue for that. Once I have that there, I am going to take this pencil and basically create the mouth of our little bunny and you can always add some whiskers i didn't i love it the way it is but you're welcome to add that as well to create my bunny's little pouch i am recycling this bean sack and um, it's basically some burlap so <laughs> that's what i'm going to be using for that and i just trimmed a square and now to um, help the edges look nicer i'm just gonna glue them down and make them look like they're sewed together and once i have that ready to go i'm gonna take that and i will be gluing that into place and if you are stubborn like me just keep in mind that when you use wax sometimes it might be hard to glue things on top of it i already know this but i keep doing it it's okay and now it's time to glue down my wooden planks to help my bunny stand and it's looking so cute and adorable and now to style it i'm gonna be using some of these um, items from the dollar tree i will be using the carrots and those green stems with that little flower i'm gonna trim some of them down just to make them shorter and here is how i'm going to style my little bunny i love how this bunny is looking here is where I decided I want my bunny to be a girl so I am making a little bow with um, the same burlap material and here is the end result this adorable bunny turned out so beautiful. create this sign i'm going to be using these bunnies and these eggs that the dollar tree sells and they are really cute but they don't really i don't really like the colors that they have so i'm going to remove the garland that they come with and i also remove the little rings that attach the eggs together and the bunnies and i will continue to remove that and here is what it looks like now i'm going to do the exact same thing to the bunnies and now i'm gonna start with my eggs and basically i am going to trim down the bottom to help them stand once i go to glue them so i am just gonna trim that down and once i have those ready i'm gonna take some u rope create a couple of knots on one corner and basically all is going to be is just a lot of wrapping and adding hot glue when i need to add glue just to make sure that the u rope doesn't slide down and um, it's secure and in place so let's continue to wrap Okay, so I decided to trim down the little hooks that are supposed to be there to hold um, the garland together. Um, they were kind of in the way and it was kind of hard to cover them up and I don't really need them. So I end up trimming those down and then I just continue um, wrapping around the rope and it gets a little bit tricky when you get to the uh, top, but it's basically adding hot glue and um, keep wrapping the you rope on there little by little until you fully cover the egg and then i just took some extra you rope and just wrap it went back um and fill in the spaces that needed 
For my bunnies, I decided I wanted to use this bean sack, aka uh, burlap fabric, and basically just cut off um, some of that fabric. Um, and you could trace your bunny first. I was lazy and I kind of just cut around it. But basically, once I have that fabric cut down, I am going to be taking some hot glue and gluing my fabric into my bunny. And this one was way easier and faster. I just like the concept. Uh, from the color of the robe and the burlap fabric that's why I wanted to do two different browns and um, yeah all I'm gonna do is just hot glue it in place and before I forget, I end up trimming down the little plastic hooks that are on the edges of the bunny. To cover the back of my bunnies, I'm gonna take this cork sheet and basically I'm going to take my bunny and I will be tracing it on there. Once I have it traced, I'm going to take my scissors and cut that off. These sheets are actually adhesive so you can just remove the back and grab your bunny and basically stick it on top. You could add some hot glue to reinforce and make sure they don't come apart. And now I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off the edges that I think are showing a little too much and this is what it looks like once it's completed. And if you've seen my past videos, I've done this a couple of times. I basically take empty um, stickers, I guess you could call them, and I just cut them off. These are from the Dollar Tree, by the way. And I basically remove the back of these, and it creates the perfect stencil. And um, yeah, why spend money on stencils when you can use these? I guess maybe it's just me. But anyway, so basically I just stick them on there and I go in with some black chalk paint you could paint these different colors but I was going for a more rustic look so I just end up going for black but um, these in different colors will look really, really pretty. Um, but yeah, so once I am done painting all my letters, I remove the stickers off and it creates the perfect letter. There you have them. They look really, really good. Okay, so for my bunnies, I wanted a little bit more definition. So I created one, my own stencil with paper and I grabbed my pink Waverly chalk paint and I just painted what would be the inside of the bunny's ears. And I think it looks really, really pretty. Okay, now I had this scrap of wood already on hand that my brother donated to me. So thank you, brother. And um, so basically, I'm just going to be staining this. This is 34 inches long by like four or five inches wide again this is a scrap of wood that was donated to me once i have that it's time to put all the bunnies and the eggs together and i basically i'm just trying to figure out exactly where each thing is gonna go once i figure that out i'm gonna take some hot glue and glue this first bunny in place and they're not gonna stand by themselves so i am going to be using this jenga blocks to hold the bunnies and the eggs in place and um for the bunnies, I just used one. It worked just fine. But for the eggs, I'm going to be using two. Uh, I'm going to glue the first one down. And then I will take another one and glue it right on top to help the egg stand. Because it's not strong enough by itself. And yeah, I'm just going to keep gluing all of them together. And now all that's left is to go back with some stain. And stain my Jenga blocks to help them blend together. And here is the end result. going to be using this beautiful and adorable bunny i found it's so cute but i thought i could make it better so i'm gonna take these scraps of signs that came from the dollar tree originally if you remember the take a kiss sign that i made for valentine's day i'm repurposing that now into letters you could trace these letters on a foam board i feel like it would work the exact same way but basically once i have them traced i'm going to take my hot saw and cut them now that I have them ready to go, I'm going to take this ivory chalk paint and use this to paint my letters. Once they are dry, I take my Waverly Brown chalk paint to distress my letters. And then I also end up taking a little bit of white paint just to go over them and help them look a little bit more distressed. 
and then I go back with some more brown paint until I like how this dress they look and now I'm gonna grab my cutesy adorable bunny and remove the hanger and I flip it over and also remove the little carrots it's really easy to remove because they are staple onto it and now I flip it over and I remove the little bow and I accidentally rip up a little piece off I was so sad but I just glue it back in there and we'll get covered up now I'm gonna take my carrots and remove them off as well from the little um, ribbon that they come with and then I fill in the holes with some hot glue glue you could use spackling and um, I created a little bow and I'm gonna glue it right on top of where the little piece of, um, came off and then once I had that there I took some brown paint to fill in or I guess cover up the hot glue and then I just distressed it onto my ears just to um, help it blend in and make it look like it was meant to be there and now I had this scrap of wood I'm going to be using for this sign and I'm gonna take some of these Jenga blocks and I'm going to be painting them white I'm not gonna be painting where I will be adding hot glue just to make it easier to glue down and now it's time to put all my pieces together and I'm going to start by figuring out exactly where I want each letter to go and once I figure that out I'm gonna start with the letter H and I'm taking a pencil to mark exactly where I need to glue it adding some hot glue and placing that down and now I'm gonna take my first Jenga block and I will be adding hot glue and gluing that into place and then I will glue the next one until i finish gluing my first letter in place and i will be gluing my letter p and my bunny in place the exact same way And now all that's left to do is to glue down my little carrots and this sign will be completed. And here is a look at the front and back of this sign. And here is the end result. I am in love of how this sign turned out. I'm taking this Dollar Tree sign and it has two eggs, a bunny, and a little cheek. And I think it's really cute. I'm only going to be using the two eggs and the bunny. And I will put the other two to the side. And as you can see, I took it apart. And now I'm going to take the two eggs and I'm peeling off that top layer. They have like the burlap fabric. And then I'm going to grab a sanding block. And I'm going to sand that down just so it's not bumpy when I go to paint it. Once that is ready, I'm going to take this um, tile stickers that I had for a long time and i wasn't sure what to you what to do with them and i'm gonna trace my eggs on there and um once i have them traced i'm gonna take my scissors and i'm gonna cut those off and now it's time to put these two pieces together i'm gonna start with the first one and removing the sticker off of this and i will be using hot glue and i was worried it was gonna look bumpy but once i put it on there immediately put the sticker on there and kind of smooth try to smooth it with my fingers and it was totally fine as a side note i did try it with just this sticker um and it did not help so you do need some kind of adhesive to make sure that stays in place okay now i'm gonna grab my waverly chalk paint and i'm going to be painting both of these little eggs and i also paint the edges just to make sure everything everything look nice and clean okay so i had this scrap piece of wood and i just took it it's a foot long and it worked perfectly for this project so i took it and stained it the information is in the description box and now i'm going to take my waverly antique wax and i'm going to distress this cute eggs okay so originally i was gonna use this cute bunny how it is because it's so cute and i really wanted this to work really bad but i think it was too colorful so at right there we are still okay we're still using this bunny we i think i can make it work so i start by taking my first egg and i add some glue at the bottom i also grab a jenga block and add some hot glue and that is going to be for extra support for this egg and make sure that it stays in place now i'm going to do the exact same thing to the second egg here is where i come in with the bunny and i was about to glue it and i was like i just don't think i like this like i think it's too colorful for what i'm going for so here is with where the plans change i took some waverly chalk paint and i basically paint this whole bunny white i paint it front and back and i was like we're just gonna do it and now i took some of my brown chalk paint 
and start painting the edges i am trying to get this bunny to get distressed but not too distressed if you know what i mean i feel like the eggs were already distressed enough and i really wanted this bunny to pop out with some more white so i go in on the edges and then i go in there with the waverly um antique wax and just do the tiniest bit on there and i think it looks really cool now i took some of this twine and i'm making a pom-pom so i wrapped it on my fingers and then i grabbed an extra, extra piece i'm sorry and then i tie it on there I cut the edges, I kind of uh, go in uh, or go back in there and kind of trim the edges to make sure everything is going to be even once we fluff up this little pom-pom and then I just rub it on my hands and it magic happens. This gets so fluffy and it actually looks like a little tail. And so after I have it ready, I just glue it back in there. Now I am happy with this bunny. It's time to put everything together. I add some hot glue at the bottom. And honestly, that little tail helps cover up the Jenga block on the back. As you can see, I'm adding the exact same, the Jenga block the exact same way. And we are done. And here is a picture of the end result. I think this looks so cute, so neutral. And I... For this DIY, I'm taking this Happy Easter Bunny sign as well as this other bigger sign and I'm removing the metal bunny that this sign has. Now, I am going to be taking my bunny and placing it on top just to see um, if it's going to fit and it ends up being a little bit too big. So, I take my scissors and trim down the bottom. Now that it's perfect, I take my sanding block and I'm trying to remove the glitter. Now, I was like, let's just do it faster and take my electric sander and let's say I went a little bit too crazy. I sent it a little bit too much but it's totally fine you don't have to do this i just i don't know what happened and moving on so i'm gonna grab these glass gems and i saw hey y'all let's diy um do this and i just wanted to do something with them as well because i really thought it was super cool so i take some of these and i start placing them around this frame and i just try to find um the ones that are around the same size try to placing them once i have them ready now i take my little bunny and i just kind of see exactly where it would be sitting and as you can see the ear kind of sticks out a little bit but it's fine i still think it looks amazing now as you can see now i'm gluing my little beads into place and i'm using hot glue for this and it works out really really good here is my last bead this is what it looks like one more try i don't know why but let's just try it now that i have them i'm gonna take this acrylic paint and i'm going to start painting my frame with this the info on the color is going to be in the description box and i'm just gonna go in give it a layer i actually end up giving it two layers of paint to cover up everything and once you get to the beads you will for sure know that you need a second layer of paint because they don't get painted completely with one layer um i guess with the strokes and stuff like you will remove some of the paint so you will have to go in with a second layer unless that's the look you're going for which that's totally fine you do you because creativity has no boundaries um but anyway let's go back to this um as you can see on the edges um i'm just kind of pushing in the paint just to make sure that those get painted as well and everything looks nice and clean but anyway so i'm just gonna let you watch while my frame dries i'm gonna take my metal bunny and i'm removing the bow and i wanted to give my bunny a little tail so i grabbed some yarn and create a really cute pom-pom out of it i did it exactly how i did it on my first diy and now for the bow i wanted to give my bow layers so i have this raffia and i just tied this cutesy bow just how you would tie your shoes and now i'm gonna glue both of these together and i add a piece to tie to tie them together in the middle and that is all i did and i really like this look now i'm gonna glue my tail and how cute is this bunny and now i'm gonna grab my antique wax from waverly and i'm going to start distressing i will start with the beads and the side and i will leave the middle till the end because if you know and you've seen my videos i've struggled before where i add wax and then it's really hard to glue things on top of it thanks to one of my subscribers she made me realize that and so thank you for telling me that because otherwise i would have still be doing that till this day <laughs> but anyway so i'm distressing now that that is completed i'm gonna take my cutesy bunny and i'm going to add glue now it's time to place it in this frame and 
I'm just trying to see exactly where it needs to go. Kind of put it in the middle. How cute is this frame looking? Now it's time to start distressing. And I really love how cute and simple this looks. And it looks very farmhouse if you ask me. Now look at how beautiful that frame is looking. It's perfect the way it is, but I wanted to add a bow to mine. So I take this chevron uh, white ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree, as well as this other plain burlap ribbon. And I cut a strip off of the burlap one and I just cinch it tight the middle with this. And that is as simple as that. Now all I'm gonna do is dovetail the ends. And now all that's left is to glue it in place. So I'm going to add some hot glue, glue it right in the middle, and that completes this really beautiful frame. And here is the end result. I love how all of these turned out. I cannot pick a favorite. They're all my favorite. But you pick your favorite DIY and let me know in the comments down below which one that is. I hope you love this video. I will see you on my next DIY. Bye!